This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Summertime in Germany. Finally. Hey. <laughs> How is it going, Dan? Yeah, pretty good. Sounds good. I'm good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> good is good. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to some nice vacation. By the way, it's not only sun over here, it's also also floods of rain, climate change, oh. many people dead, etc. So it's not just funny, but uh, yeah, nonetheless, it's been a while. Um, Long time no see. Yeah, and like always, that fires back. We have a ton of things on the list. Oh, today. yeah. Also, we have a special, as you probably read from the title of this episode, mm -hmm. uh, we will talk about Mautic Conference Global 2021, yeah. which was last month and we still didn't, didn't cover properly. We also added the main keynote by Ruth Chisley mm -hmm. to the end of this podcast episode. Um, we're, we're recording this on July 28th. And um, Modic 4 is still not out. letting us wait. Yet. Yeah. yeah, and obviously it's not Modic 4. It's it's uh, the development team that that is still trying to get the last things things ironed out. If yeah. you are listening to this early, you can always go to the Slack channels and maybe even help them get things to the level they want it to be. Yeah, but and. I'd rather prefer it that way, that we iron out the last bugs instead of bringing like an unperfect version of yeah. Mordic 4. Yeah, it's certainly not the last bugs, but yeah. the, the important ones to get to the quality level where people can actually use it and not just uh, watch it, but don't dare using it. So, yeah. yeah, true. Yeah, we did discuss it before. Nonetheless, um, don't hold your breath. Uh, eventually, <laughs> it's going to be there. and uh, Sooner than later. Yeah. No, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> so our plan was to um, cover some of the important things from the last weeks, yeah. um, but real brief today. It's not like we go anything into uh, into anything in, in great depth, yeah. but uh, we go through the list and then we talk about the Mordic conference. There's a plan. Let's go. Then let's start with our little know-how section. Uh, starting today is... Um, an article, well, said the video by Avinash Davi, Dal Dalvi, I hope I pronounced his name right. Um, he made a very good uh, tutorial on how to create a custom plugin for Mordic. And we will link that in the show notes. It's if you're out there interested in how to create your own custom plugin in Mordic, feel free to watch his tutorial. Yeah, Avi is, is obviously one of the core team members of the Mordic project. Yeah. And he's going, doing good stuff. And uh, here's a little coverage of how to develop a plugin. Uh, similar to that, uh, from another core team member, that's Mohit Aguera from Accelerant. Mm -hmm. uh, he was talking specific, or he, he did a blog post specifically on the topic of authentication, oh. uh, including our famous, infamous uh, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, which, if if you are a developer and you are in charge of uh, authentication, uh, authenticating against Mordic uh, or against others, um, that's probably a well known one. It's it's good to have a roundup of the latest and greatest on this topic by Mohit. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out. And um, there's no episode without stating his name. Joey also provided a very good article <laughs> about um, how to manage tracking and further things with Mautic across multiple domains. There's been some good information. He did a very well roundup about that topic. Yeah, it's for some reason it's coming up more frequently these days. Yep. And um, yeah, it's, it's a wide topic and the tracking is just Part one of, of it, one yeah. of the things in the mix uh but yeah we have we have a bottom line at least yeah. and uh, maybe it's uh, one of those topics that we should discuss on the show here uh eventually yeah. good next up is kubernetes it's uh pretty specific to those who care about modic infrastructure either if you run your own uh sas version of modic or if you uh, want to integrate modic into your own existing sophisticated Kubernetes infrastructure. <laughs> uh, Accelerant is one of those uh, companies who actively support uh, 
the development on, on or the enhancement of Mordic on, on Kubernetes and uh, not Mohit in this case, but Kieran Buddy also from Accelerant did a really good blog post on the topic. So link like all the other links is in the show notes. Yeah, and to round up the know-how section, um, there's been a, a topic in the Mordic forum about recapture three and how to integrate reca recapture three. Um, using Mordic and yeah, get rid of pesky recapture too, where you have to click on different pictures and identify all the street signs and stuff. No more that. We have recapture 3 and how to integrate that with Mordic. Yeah, so now, now that you mention it, I hope everybody knows what, what recapture is. It's one of the things that you put into forms if you are over, overwhelmed with spam. There are yeah. just a few options what you can do against it. Capture form or capture captures are one of those things with recapture three you don't have that silly user interaction and still <laughs> the uh way better quality who what else do we have um maybe in the in the area of, of code releases etc um you may be familiar with the concept of adding mortic tracking to emails that you send mm -hmm. uh, that has been there for outlet for a while for gmail yeah. and maybe we should talk about that we too eventually in, in in the in the mortic cast but the big news here is it's now even available for thunderbird oh, nice. so another uh, email client pretty widespread in the open source and, and specifically in the Linux community. Yeah. So folks, you, you can now track your <laughs> recipients as well. Uh, yeah. Again, if that's legal, if it's ethical, etc., it's, it's a different story. And uh, what the value is and what the options are is, is also part of the game. I think it's a fascinating thing to talk about. Yeah, let's put that in the list. Will we? And um, yeah, there's also, we're talking about widespread. Um, The WooCommerce integration for Mordic hit a new uh, version, the 2.2.3, if I can correctly, and it just brings a new new part of fancy features like here and there, nifty enhancements. And um, yeah, the WooCommerce integration, I think, is pretty far spread around the Mordic community. There are a lot of people using it and having nice new features, which I want about the community is always a good thing. Yeah, uh, we have a colleague over here who's doing his uh, bachelor yeah andy. Uh, thesis <laughs> yeah hey andy uh about uh integration from from more or from from marketing automation rather with uh, e-commerce yeah. and uh he's looking at wh what is there today mm -hmm. with modic or with other systems and what what should be there what could be there and what people want <laughs> to see and it's pretty obvious that that uh there's a lot of opportunity still mm -hmm. and it's good to see that that in some places we're improving if nothing else okay and uh speaking of uh improving. dreams and feature <laughs> wish, <laughs> uh, we have of course uh, the feature wish list in in the forums and um that has received a little enhancement lately by um adding tags categories basically mm -hmm. to the wishes you can now if you create a feature wish tag it yourself um like oh this has to do with emails this has to do with reports this has oh, to do yeah. with uh, you name it mm -hmm. um and uh, that that helps uh, turning those wishes into uh issues or topic items for the proper teams eventually hopefully target yeah, teams, teams. <laughs> um and among the those Uh, wishes or ideas that pop up every every week or so we picked one that was a little bit larger and uh, Ruth just um, did the little work to merge multiple similar things into one large yeah. uh, item and, and even commented uh, on it herself and the name that it now carries is create a folder system to organize emails segment etc by campaign and what it turned into was basically a larger approach to give more structure to anything within mortic because uh, if if you have a multi-user mortic maybe even multi country or multiple um company areas etc yeah. then it's many people using the same system and it's pretty hard to keep track of what belongs where and uh, having some some structure on top of that 
would certainly help. Yeah, I mean, if you feel the same, yeah, uh, by all means, go there, spend one of your valuable votes. You only have five or so, I think, uh, on this topic. If you prefer another one, uh, or when you create your, your own one, uh, the forum is the place to go. That's true. Um, yeah, um, talking about forum community, we had a big event called the Modicon not that far along ago. And um, like we talked about it in person, of course, but how did you like the Modicon? What, what's your like general opinion about it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to start with, with some news that we introduced this year and that we don't call it Modicon anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> uh, no, no. It's, uh, it's, the unofficial name is, of course, still Modicon and, and the Slack channel is still called that way, and etc. But uh, we officially renamed it to Maltic Conference, mm -hmm. or in this case, Maltic Conference Global 2021. The reason behind that is that in the Spanish language, Maldicon is pretty close to some bad mouth word, I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah. uh, they asked us to step away so from somehow that. find a better name and <laughs> we were really creative and called oh, yeah. it Maltic Conference. Um, yeah, and I, I, I was extremely excited it, it was so great how it went it was obviously a lot of stress and in, in all yeah. the preparation once again although yeah we had we had we didn't have to start from from zero like we did last year yeah. uh so yeah that that went all well it was all in time but still was stressful um but then that the, the virtual door was opened and it uh, ran smoothly and the quality of the talks were, was so good and the the attendance was great and, and it was much more interactive than it was last year um yeah i couldn't have been <laughs> happier and when when the doors closed there was in my time zone that was on friday we started on Mon uh, wednesday right yeah uh it was officially two days wednesday to th th Thursday. thursday yeah but of course we are in many different time zones and and for me we, we were already entering friday when we finally had the closing keynote keynote and now i'm sitting outside <laughs> in the dark Late night session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was fun yeah um again the, the quality was was amazing and it was uh, so widespread and uh, i hope it was something for everybody i'm, pr I'm pretty sure there was one mm -hmm. one talk for everybody at least yeah and by the way the talks are of course all on youtube now yep. uh, so we had some people who did all the work to cut it into peeps pieces <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, to have the overlays or, or to, to have the subtitles etc in place and uh, good job folks yeah. uh, thank you so much and, work, yeah uh, thanks yeah. <laughs> yeah and speaking of um two days and all that 58 sessions and uh, six languages yes. by the way all those numbers are now compiled in a roundup blog post that mm -hmm. is published in the mordic.org blog and like everything else in the show notes of course um and there are some pretty impressive numbers like from those roughly 300 registrations that we had we had an mm -hmm. over 75 percent attendance rate which, is which is very good crazy yeah. yeah i mean it's not a for free event if it's no. for free the attendance is probably is typically lower yeah of course <laughs> but in our case we were starting from five bucks uh which is not a financial must uh, that if i spend those five bucks i have to attend it was just by it itself was over 75 percent that's really cool and uh speaking of the money we had this uh pay what you want model mm -hmm. once again starting from five but but uh going way up we had people who actually spent 200 bucks oh um, generous yeah really generous it's basically a donation to the course yeah. and uh, what better cause could there be than than a no. source project <laughs> perfect <laughs> yeah um as you can imagine it totaled up to to good amount of money it, and uh, the costs were not too high for such a virtual event we had really good sponsors um so we, we had a good uh, outcome income <laughs> income <laughs> uh, outcome better, yeah <laughs> for the community and 100% of that goes to to mortic to 
helping teams make it better to paying for the infrastructure and all that. So, um, yeah, uh, helpful for the Mordic for uh, development as well. No. Um, and if you want to see all those numbers in, the, in detail, once again, there's a blog post and uh, we're linking to it. Yeah, and now that we covered a bit of like data and facts and numbers, what were, like, did you have a favorite talk? Were there many talks hmm. or multiple talks where you would suggest that others should at least watch that one because that's your gem? Well, again, it's uh, 58 sessions. Yeah, is, it's a lot of a ton, Even that it's now online, I have not even seen half of them. Mm. And um, I've, to be honest, I also pick, for one thing, the topics I think may be interesting for me and I rely on recommendations from others. And one thing that's really obvious is the keynote by Ruth, the main keynote, yeah. um, the one, exactly the one we have in the, in the podcast here. Um, where she is giving a lot of behind the scenes, uh, how are things evolving, how is community doing, how the process is changing, what is coming up in the future for Mordic, etc. Uh, a ton of unique information, so that's definitely worth listening to or watching, if nothing else. Um, but beside that, there was also really practical information uh, for marketers who want to use Mautic, but also for developers who want to develop things or a uh, lot of other things, community topics as well. So everybody should make their own choices. When you say gem, I would just boil it down, down to, to one. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a lead, lead scoring talk by Steve Robinson, oh, yeah. really at the end of the event. Uh, the content was really deep and uh, way beyond just scoring. Uh, it, it was really very practical marketing uh, for everybody who's, who is caring about lead generation. Um, yeah, go ahead and watch this one. There, there are so many others, but but it's tough to to choose those and and uh skip these uh, yeah. and uh, um, just I, i can't do this so many yeah. yeah i personally had a talk which was very intriguing because of the title mm -hmm. and also the talk was pretty good is um where nobody likes sales people especially at <laughs> parties <laughs> by alex hammerschmidt um i don't even want to spoil the content of it i just if you out there have the time i i suggest you you give it a look it was pretty good Okay. That's my, my suggestion. Talking about suggestions, do you have a suggestion about what we could change looking into the next Mordic conference global? Like we had the second iteration now. Is there something that you would say, ah, we could work on, or this and that should be improved, if any? <laughs> uh, well, naturally, within the, the Mordic conference team, Uh, we already had the discussion to say, okay, where can we tweak things, make it even better, mm -hmm. etc. And there's always a lot of fine tuning. Of course. And <laughs> it also depends on the capacity. If we are more more happy helping hands, we can do even better things. But we're bottom line, we were really happy with what we had this time. The attendance was good. The number of sessions and speakers was good. The quality was good. Uh, the platform and all worked pretty well. Yeah. Um, We even have the talks on YouTube now. That's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, would I want 100 sessions rather than 60? Well, not necessarily. If they're all brilliant ones, yes. No. Uh, but the pure quantity, I don't care too much. I think we, we had a lot of choice for everybody across the board. The one thing that maybe we should or could talk, uh, uh, take another look is more clarity on on the, uh, not tracks, by, but areas. Uh, like like this talk is for developers, this oh, is yeah. for marketeers, etc. Uh, to make it even simpler to, to find the things that are for you. Yeah. Well, we, we did have the, these tags and you could take click on the little mark, marketing tag or development tag, etc. And then have the list of things that carry that tag. But maybe we could make that even clearer to help everybody 
create their own schedule perfectly. Yeah. The other approach obviously would be to reduce the number of um, focuses or <laughs> to be le less unfocused. Um, but we decided that for this global event, um, it is absolutely okay to be really, really, really widespread and across the board and something for everybody yeah. because we are virtual. Mm, get global. Everybody, yeah, but especially because we're, we're virtual. It's not like somebody has to tra travel somewhere and make their, their choices and and then uh, find out that, that half of it was a waste of time, which sometimes happen in, yeah. happens in in-person events. Um, in this case, even if you're missing the event you c or a talk, you can still watch it on YouTube. And you can switch from talk to talk if you find out that one is not for you, etc. So it's good. There's, there's no downside really to having this this variety and choice. That's a good point. Um, and so we're going to stick with it, just make it even more accessible, I guess. Um, maybe when we're done with, with this uh, Moticon content we can touch a little bit on on uh, the upcoming in-person event oh so, yeah. yeah remind me of that please oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> before we do that i'd like to touch a little bit on on bits and pieces that came up during the conference and mm -hmm. that may de deserve a little follow-up and one of those is the fund oss approach which was well, pretty heavily promoted during the conference yeah I hope everybody at least saw the trailer once and the pitch by, by <laughs> Ruth. Um, for those who didn't, FundOSS is a brand new approach uh, where some some people are willing to give money to, to support open source in general. Mm -hmm. um, and the way they... Um, uh, was it allocate the money is not just by their own decision but by donations from a certain community in our uh, in our case in Mordic community yeah. we had a couple of days to raise money for the community and depending on how many people would give money for the ca for the cause yeah. not necessarily how much but more more importantly how many mm -hmm. uh, that that money would be upped by a certain amount of money from the Fundos S project, Pretty which cool. is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Leon, give, give us the numbers. Ah, Mason, the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think we got about $1,411 from 55, uh, 55 donators, which is pretty generous. Mm. But um, Fundos S topped that or matched that, better said with about 3,621 bucks of their own. Mm. So we ended up with uh, roughly over $5,000, which is which amazing. It blows my mind. Like <laughs> they, they doubled up, more than doubled up our uh, yeah. donations. It's crazy. Yeah, it's cool. And again, that's money that goes to the Morty community yeah. directly. It helps us um, paying for the infrastructure, but also enabling the teams uh to to develop the product basically yeah. and to to bring modic to the future same is true of course for uh the for any profit that comes from the conference itself mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine that that uh there is some good net profit uh given that it's all virtual the costs were not too high we had we had a lot of attendants uh, uh attendees and then uh, very good sponsors yeah. and all the actual numbers are in the blog post uh, what else do we have? We have the bug bounty thing that we did uh, talk about in the podcast before. Yep, but did. I think we never really gave the URL. So just to make sure, let's uh, <laughs> bring it up here. It's bountysource.com slash team slash Mordic. And um, there you can find the current uh, things that are up for a bounty. Yep. So maybe... We should explain that once again. Uh, basically, there's any sort of issues or things that somebody wants to get done, like like a bug fixed or a feature introduced or whatever, mm -hmm. um, with a price tag or with, with some money attached. So if I want a bug uh, out of the way, I can go there and say, hey, here's the issue. 
and here's some money. Or I could go there and, and look through the existing issues and say, okay, five other people already gave some money here. I also chip in. Yeah. Um, and only if somebody else says, okay, I will do it for this sort of money, then I will actually have to pay. Good system. And so <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. So if you want to give a handful of dollars uh, for a certain thing in Mordic, go there. If yeah, you want to earn a couple of handfuls of dollars, uh, <laughs> maybe there. this is another <laughs> idea. Yeah, just go there. Um, yeah, other things that came up during the uh, keynote was the renewed release process. There's a specific blog post on that that we'll link to that explains the new release process for Mordic. Yep. Um, and the last thing that I would like to bring up is Tiger Teams, yeah. obviously, because I'm a little bit championing that. Um, uh, we did mention, or we did first mention Tiger Teams at Mordicon 2020. Yep. During this Mordicon, the the first four target teams were officially launched. Yeah, they nice. were presented by their preliminary team leads, um, who explained what is a target team, of course, how mm -hmm. are they working, but most importantly, what what is the scope of the team? Why is it important? Why why are they motivated to do it? Who else should do it? What are examples for quick wins or, or maybe larger? Uh, timeline things. Yeah. Just to remind everybody, Tiger Team is an ongoing thing, a small little team that is dedicated to a certain niche within Mordic, like <sighs> focus items, reports, dashboard, landing pages. Landing emails. pages. Yeah, no, not <laughs> exactly a niche, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. Emails is one, campaigns is one, um, <sighs> stats. Oh, no, no. Um, Report. Uh, reports we said, uh, points, um, scoring, mm. yeah. um, even the user interface, UX UI is one. So UX UI was one of those that were launched. Mm. Emails, yeah. um, focus items and dynamic web content, campaigns, webhooks. Those were the ones that were launched during Mordicon, Mordic Conference, sorry, <laughs> 2021 Global. Um, there are about, I don't know, 12 or 14 other ones that have not been launched yet, but but there are people here and there who, who express their interest in, in doing that for now. We c we mostly concentrate about those four. Mm -hmm. If you are interested into in, in those, you can find the teams in Slack, who's TT hyphen name of the Tiger team. Yes. Um, and everybody is welcoming everybody who's interested. There's no commitment at this point. The teams are all in what we call um, incubator mode yeah. so we're finding our structures like like we how, how do we collaborate co collaborate within the team how do we collaborate among the teams we uh, make sure to have enough people when we start and then hopefully w when uh, maybe at the end of the summer or so we're gonna start the first teams probably campaign team will be the first uh, to really get up to speed because campaigns is also one of the focus uh, topics in, I think, Mordic 402. So, yeah, hopefully they yeah. can already deliver. Yeah, Ooh, that's Tiger Teams. What <laughs> else do you. we have? Yeah, last but not least, um, we have a survey after the um, Mordic Global Conference Global. <laughs> um, we came up with the idea to have... Um, a uh, user survey so everybody who uses Mordic um, is getting a lot like ideas here and there um, what he or she thinks about Mordic and now we as the community um, need to like get that together boil that together and make actions out of it so um, if you have the time please go there fill out the survey and you will help growing the community because we know what the community wants because and mm -hmm. you will also make the product better because yeah, the product team has some insights how people actually use Mordic and what what they love what they miss and so on so maybe there are points that go just under the radar for the product yeah. team and then there the more people are talking or filling in 
the yeah. problem in the survey. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, do it. And uh, you know where to find the link, of course. <laughs> in the show notes. <laughs> and now back to your favorite topic, as I already promised. Uh, Tiger it. teams? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, as well, but uh, yeah. No, but Modic yeah, Conference. You, uh, the reminder for Modic Conference, uh, non-virtual, no, yeah. non, non-global. Exciting. And uh, yeah, it's uh, no secret. We did mention that before that we were discussing the concept and it's now basically a done deal that mm -hmm. we want to stick with the schedule where in the second quarter we do the global event virtually yeah. and in the fourth quarter we do a in per, an in-person event, uh, a per-continent thing. So this year, and we're talking 2021, yep. we actually want to try for Multi Conference North America. <laughs> That would be in Boston, USA. Mm -hmm. uh, and we even have a date. So save the date for November the 8th. It's uh, noted down. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, so th that's Monday. And... Uh, We'll have a venue in the Acquia offices. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that is that we need to be risk-free. Obviously, there's a chance of uh, cancellation. Yep. Um, so we don't want to pay five-digit numbers of uh, cancellation fees. Yeah, <laughs> understandable. <on the> venue. <laughs> so um, if, if we need to cancel, uh, we're going to refund the tickets. We, we don't have the costs for the venue, etc. So that's our way to doing it in a doable way in 2021. That's the way the world is. Uh, it's not going to be a huge event. We're going to limit uh, to 50 uh, attendees plus uh, speakers and team, etc. Mm -hmm. And it's a single day. So November 8th, it's Monday. On November 9th, we'll have team sprints, etc. But November 8th is the, the main day. And moreover, we want to focus this event, the opposite of what I just said for more <laughs> Conference Global. Yeah. We want to do here, we want to make it an, an event on using Mordic, on successfully and even more successfully uh, using Mordic for actual marketing so it's it's for users it's also for agencies it's it support users obviously yeah. uh, and it is basically because it's called north america for users <laughs> in canada and in the u.s everybody else is welcome as well but we specifically uh focus this on the north american market um what else is there to say hmm I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think it's... It's not good. officially announced yet. It, it will be in, a, I don't know, two or three weeks, I would guess. No. I would guess. Um, and there's more to say, but for now, just save the date and uh, think about it. If you are in the US, it's maybe a must. <laughs> <laughs> If you are elsewhere in the world and maybe you're an agency, I've heard of, of many who are willing to go mm -hmm. and I will certainly go myself. So, yeah, I hope we meet there. Yeah, stay tuned. Good. Other than that, um, I think sh we should move on to the interview. Uh, we want to say bye-bye uh, before we start the interview, or rather the Indeed. keynote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I did talk to people recently who, during the con conversation, um, mentioned that, oh, by the way, Uh, I'm listening to the podcast and, oh. <laughs> um, and thank you so much and etc. Oh, we, uh, uh, we absolutely appreciate that and I yeah, forward sure everything to the team here. Um, and feel free to uh, to talk about it even more. Maybe not even in a not only in a random con conversation with myself, maybe in social media or wherever, or even more importantly in in hinting somebody else like like hey um i've discovered the modicast for myself it wouldn't that be something for you as well so spread the word please we appreciate it <laughs> we do we do <laughs> like we do all sort of uh feedback and and specifically all sort of criticism and um, constructive feedback etc that's true <laughs> so enough <laughs> of that uh thank you so much for now uh You, dear listeners, have a good amount of audio ahead of yourself because we're now switching over to Mautic Conference Global 2021. And here comes 
Luis Chisley. For now, from our side, uh, thank you very much for listening. Stay safe and uh, yeah, talk. Listen to you soon. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, we will talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. So thank you everyone for joining this keynote. It's great to be back again. Um, as David mentioned, so my name's Ruth Cheesley. My pronouns are she, her. I live in Ipswich, so you can see some photos there of our lovely waterfront town in the east of England. And I work as project lead for Mautic. You can connect with me online pretty much anywhere with R. Cheesley. And after this presentation, I'll also share the slides and resources on my notice page. So you won't have to kind of take notes and stuff. They'll all be there. It doesn't seem like it, but it was only sort of six, seven months ago that we were putting on our first ever world conference. So this was the first time we'd ever really brought the community together in big numbers. We were planning to have it in Boston. Unfortunately, the pandemic had other ideas. We had to quickly pivot to a digital event. And so Morticon 2020, our first event happened online. It was so successful. We had such great feedback that we decided why not do it again? And actually, I think this event has been even better, even if, if that was possible. The tech has been a bit better, a bit more improved. We've learned a lot from the first experience. We've had lots more people joining us who didn't attend last time. So it's been really great to see this event continue to grow. And what I'm pleased to say is that the team have decided that our world conference, so this event, will always happen virtually. We feel like it is an opportunity to bring everyone together in our community without the worry of visas, of travel, of accommodation. And it allows a lot more uh, flexibility for our speakers as well. So even if the pandemic goes away, we'll still stay virtual. Definitely deserving of my favorite emoji, the dancing banana. We are making tentative plans, very tentative plans, for an in-person conference in November. But that does, of course, all revolve around what happens with the COVID rules. So do keep an ear out because we will be telling you if we're actually going to go ahead with this or not. I really hope that actually worldwide we are able to get this pandemic under control. We've lost so many friends, family members. Lots of people around the world have really suffered. But it's great to see that things are starting to edge towards getting this pandemic under control. And I can't wait to sit down in a bar with a glass of lemonade and just hang out with people. It's just not the same on Zoom, no matter how much we try. And I was thinking the other day, oh, I feel like we're not making enough progress. We're not doing enough. I quite often say to myself, I'm not doing enough. But actually, if we think back, it was only two years, just over two years ago that this announcement came pretty much out of the blue to everyone in the community that Acquia was acquiring Mortic Inc. and with it, the brand of Mortic and the community. I can remember reading this article and having real mixed feelings. And at the time in the community, there was lots of fear, there was lots of uncertainty. We didn't know whether the project was gonna continue or not. And I'm really pleased to see how strongly we've come out of that fear, uncertainty and doubt. We really have made huge progress over the last two years. And Mautic is really starting to grow and thrive and attract people to the community, to the product, and to the organizations who are building up an ecosystem around us. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's happened in the community over the last year. Some of you who are maybe new to Mautic or maybe you're a, a user of Mautic but you don't really get involved in the community may not actually know what happens under the hood in order for this project to make the releases and give you the updates. So in the last 12 months, we had 172 individual contributors across GitHub, so making features or bug fixes in pull requests, which we call PRs in Slack, so responding to someone who then says thank you, which is an indication that you've been helpful to someone. In the forums where your responses have been marked as a, a solution, and also in Stack Overflow and Reddit. So those are the areas that we monitor the community at the moment. And all the names you can see in the Mortibot here are those 172 contributors. And the size of the name is based on the number of contributions that that individual has made. 
So you may see your name there. You may not see your name there. You may not be so happy with how small your name is there. So that's my challenge to you next year is let's see your name on there if it's not there now. Let's see it bigger if it's there as well. And last year, just for um, comparison, we had 113 contributions. So that's a 52% increase in the last year. That's pretty good going, really, to see that increase in contributors. But it's not only about individuals. We also want to have, as a more sustainable model for open source, organizations getting involved, contributing, encouraging their team to get involved and contribute. So in the last 12 months, we had 19 organizations contribute to Mortic across all the same channels that I mentioned before. Little Mortibot feels a bit empty to me. Doesn't he feel a bit empty to you? But still, these organizations are the ones who've been contributing to Mortic. And again, the larger names are the ones that are contributing more. Smaller names are the ones that are contributing less. So next year, I would love to see our little Mortibot bursting out the seams because there's so many more organizations who are making contributions to the project. But last year we had 13 and now we have 19. So that's a 46% increase. So I'm actually really pleased. We're moving in the right direction. We're having more organizations seeing the value in contributing back to Mortic and making a difference to the project. And when we look at those contributions, you can see that in 2019, it was really pretty stagnant. It was a little bump here and there, but it was pretty low. And you can see the big epic bumps as we go up to Mortic 3. There was a huge amount of work involved in that release, massive number of contributions from lots of people. And then we had a bit of a lull. I think this is the bit where everyone goes, oh my goodness, I'm exhausted. That was hard work. But it takes a breather. And then we start to ramp up again as we're coming towards Mortic 4. But the thing that I'm really pleased about is that we are still maintaining that high level of contribution, the highest that we've seen since the acquisition. So things are still growing. We are still seeing people coming into the project who are new. We're seeing people contributing more. And that is great from my perspective. But we definitely would not be in this position if it weren't for this bunch of awesome people. So these are the leadership team of the Mortic community. They each stepped up to help us in various areas of the community. You may well have heard about the different teams that they lead and what they do in Mortic. So I'm not going to go into great detail about that here. But I will draw your attention to the fact we have two positions vacant at the moment, assistant team lead for education and for marketing. So if you think you might like to help us with improving our documentation, our forums, making good quality resources available to Mortic users, Assistant Team Lead for Education would be a great opportunity. Likewise, if you're a marketer or you're interested in helping us market Mortic better to the outside world, as well as communicate within the community, the Assistant Team Lead for the Marketing Team would be a great opportunity. So if you're interested in those, do reach out to the team leads. Feel free to ping me if you have any questions. But I do encourage you to just step up and say, yeah, I'll try. Just give it a go. Even if you think you haven't got all the skills you need, start somewhere and learn and we'll help you to learn. So let's have a little book, look at what's actually been happening in the community. We've seen a really substantial growth in meetup members and attendees. And this is all amidst the pandemic. It's been really great to see people really engaging with the meetups that we have got running at the moment. We've got official Mortic meetups located in all these places. I'm really excited, and so are the Spanish community, about the Valencia group, which has just started up. We also started integrating remote meetups. So we've got the Mortic Help Desk meetup, which is a great opportunity. It's led by David and Joey, and you can bring questions or problems that you have with Mortic, and it's facilitated by them, but the whole of the group help each other with those issues. There's also the German language Mortic Monday, which happens, I think, once a month, led by Eki Grembel. So we're kind of investigating how we move forwards in this pandemic world. But if you see that list and think, why is my place not on that list? If you want to start a meetup, we really would encourage that. These are the things you need to do to do that. You need to have enough people to be interested in actually coming to a meetup. So a thread in the forums is a great place to do that to say, I want to start a meetup in this location. Who wants to join me? 
It can be remote at the moment. It doesn't have to be in person. We do encourage you to have more than one person. We need a location for it to be based in. Ideally, think about where you might meet so that when we can go back to meeting in person, you have an idea of where. But a regular date is the thing that really helps. The meetups that have been successful are the ones that meet, say, the first Tuesday of every month at six o'clock. And people know and it's in their calendar. And we can also help you with finding your first few speakers. So I'd really love to see us to capitalize on this and really drive the local meetups in our community. There's nothing better than being able to hang out with other Mortic users, ask that really annoying question that you've been trying to solve for weeks. That's why I first started a user group, and that's how I got involved in open source, was I had problems and I had no one to ask. And someone helped me fix a problem within like 10 minutes that I'd spent like the whole day trying to fix. So I saw the value of having other people that I could connect with locally. And the Community Partners Program is also something we've launched this year. It's been a huge success so far. We have five founding partners that you can see here. If you want to find out more about them and read more about their case studies or maybe even work with them, have a look at mau.tc slash partners. That will take you to the partners page on the website or it's on the top menu. These are people who are contributing actively to Mortic. They're helping us to grow and thrive, and they're financially contributing as well. And I'm really pleased that at the end of this month, Drop Solid are going to be joining this awesome team of companies. So how do you become a partner? First off, you need to be financially supporting us. You can do that on GitHub Sponsors, or you can do that on opencollective.com slash Mortic if you prefer. You can find more information about this on the website, on the blog post where we announce the partners program. But it's not only about money. We only really want partners if they're contributing to make Mortic more successful. So you also have to be contributing in any of the ways that I talked about earlier, or running a team or leading an initiative or something like that. We need to show sustained financial and practical contributions over three months. And then we will consider in the council whether that organization can be selected as a partner. And you might be saying, well, how much do I have to sponsor to be eligible? We've tried to find a way to make this as equal as possible around the world. If we were to just say everyone had to sponsor at $100 in the US or the Europe or other regions, that's much more achievable than in some places in the world. So that's not really a fair system. So what we've done is we've taken a metric. It's not perfect. There are some places where it falls down called the Big Mac Index. Google it if you want to know more. There's more information also on the um, page, the blog post where we announced this. But this graph shows you the sponsorship amount in dollars that you would have to be contributing on a monthly basis based on the country of your head office. So it basically takes the cost of a Big Mac and uses that as the relationship to the US dollars cost of a Big Mac. So you can work out the cost. So if you're somewhere like Switzerland, Sweden, Norway, you'd be paying slightly more than the $100 in the US. But if you're in somewhere like Ukraine or Russia, you'd be paying significantly less. And these are minimums. So you can decide to pay more if you want to. These are just the minimums that we require. And there is a discrepancy there with Lebanon because of the hyperinflation in that country. If there's anyone from Lebanon who wants to become a partner, come speak to me and we'll figure out what the appropriate rate is. If your country isn't on here as well, come and chat to us and we can figure out what that rate would be. But this is the best way that we could think of to make it a fair way for anyone, wherever you are in the world, to become a partner. So that's a couple of things that have happened over the last year. And I couldn't believe it that we missed this. We missed an opportunity for cake and candles, folks. How could we have done this? Because it was only a year ago that we launched Mortic 3, a year and two days. It was on the 15th of June. Can't believe I forgot that. But it was the biggest thing we've done since Mortic was created, the biggest release that had been made. It was a really big deal. There was so much work that went on to get this release over the line. We had 20 people who contributed. We had nearly 4,000 files that were changed as a result of this, in this uh, project. And at that time, well, slightly before, we also decided we were gonna move to a monthly release cycle. So this means that we would be making a release every single month. We start with 
more tick three, and then we would have two bug fix releases. Then we would have 3.1, which includes features, and then two bug fixes, and then more tick three two, which includes features, and you get the picture. So we introduced this because there'd been a bit of a stagnation in releases. We weren't really making progress with the big backlog we had. Those of you who like numbers, this is what it looked like. So 12, 13, 15 in 2015, 16, 17, and then it really tanked in 2018 and 19. We're now back on track, we're doing really well, but that's why we that's where we were at, basically. So far, we've actually managed to hit all of those releases. We've managed to get all of them and then some because we had a security issue that necessitated making another uh, release and we had a couple of hot fixes as well. The only one that we didn't hit the timeline on is the Mortic 4 release. We were being a little bit ambitious in trying to get that done by the end of May. Unfortunately, we still have a few changes and a few bugs that we need to test and fix before we can make the release. And because most of the team who were involved in the Mortic 4 project are also involved in this event, it wasn't something we could do at the same time. So we're giving ourselves a couple of weeks to get through those last bugs. You can help us by testing the beta in a local environment or a development environment, which you can download from GitHub, or you can test the features branch, which is the latest code. We do have a lot of people who are still on Mortic 2. So this chart shows you all the versions. I should also say that this is only people who are calling home to see if there's an update to the Mortic update server. So it may not include SaaS providers who use their own update server. But you can see here, we've got a lot of instances that are still on the Mortic 2 series. But the Mortic 3 ones, we're generally tending to get people staying up to date. So that's really good progress. When we looked at this last year, there was a lot more down in the lower ends of the twos. So we are getting there, but we do have a lot of 2.16 releases that still need to be migrated to three. So what's coming up in Mortic 4? I expect that's something that you're quite interested in and in knowing what's actually coming in this next feature release. Major release, I should say, sorry. So these stats are accurate as at yesterday evening. You can see immediately there's significantly less files that have been changed, less commits. We've got more contributors, which is great, 16 contributors, extra contributors compared to last year's Mortic 3. But we're actually roughly the same timeline. Alan made the first pull request with what we think we need to do to change to support Symphony 4 back on the 15th of November. That's when we first started working on this project and we're looking at releasing at the end of July. So we're not far off about the same timeline that we looked at for the Mortic 3 release as well. So what I'm going to do is take you through some of the features. Some of them you may have seen or heard about, some of them you may not have done. And there'll be some videos, some of the ones that I've recorded, some of the ones that the initiative leads have recorded. So let's have a look, let's jump in. We've got the tag management user interface. So this is something that was supplied by Looked for Digital Marketing. And also some tests were written by other organizations in the community. So thanks to those for providing this, but also helping us get this into a state where we could merge. And here's a short video. So that's a great improvement, I think you'll agree, from what we had before. It's definitely um, a good start. It's something that we can work on and iterate on. And what I would suggest we talk about now is the email builder. So I think the email builder is probably the one that most people um, will have heard about at some point. If you haven't tested it out yet, that's fine. I'm gonna show you a little video of that as well. So the email builder is based on an open source framework called Grapes.js. So you'll often hear people refer to it as the Grapes.js builder, and that's what the icon looks like in the plugins. 
It was originally contributed by Web Mechanics. So thank you so much for all the work you did to actually get this started. And then Adrian Schimp from Idea2 has taken that on and has been doing lots of refactoring and optimizing and improving and fixing of bugs. We've also had three themes from Joey at Friendly, and we've had two teams, uh, two other themes from Hartmut IO. So really appreciate all those organizations who've contributed um, to this initiative. So here's a little video for this one. Again, pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't bear any resemblance, does it, to what we have in the builder at the moment. It's great to see a modern user interface. I would also say that the skin that you see there is the dark skin. We're actually going to have a Mortic themed skin that will be white with the purple accents when we actually make the release. This was just done in a development environment that didn't have that theme applied. So the next thing is the Mortic marketplace, which I have to say quite slowly sometimes. This is available in a beta release and it allows you to read only. So you can't actually install anything yet. The main reason for that is the underlying stuff that is needed to do that was required before we could actually build it. And that's in the composer initiative, which we've only just finished. So this allows you to see all of the packages that are available, bundles that you could install or plugins that you could install for Mortic. And it allows you to go through and view information about the releases, about the maintainers and so forth. So I'm super excited to actually have this start to be uh, coming into production so we can use this in Mortic. I'll talk a little bit about that later when we get to the initiatives. And the next one is one for you DevOps folks or developers who are fans of using Composer to manage Mortic. The Composer initiative was a huge undertaking. There's been an epic amount of work that's been done, mostly by Nick from Drop Solid, but also really appreciate the help from Rahul Shinde from Accelerant, who has also been helping with reviewing PRs, giving feedback and suggestions, and helping with this project generally. So if you like Composer, pay attention, because you're going to be very excited by this next video.
Okay, pretty cool. So the next thing is also maybe going to be of interest to developers, but it also should be of interest to the users of Mortic. In the process of working on over the last year on our releases, we've also been working on improving our automated test coverage. And what this means is every piece of code in Mortic, we want to get to the point where as much as possible, there are tests that actually make sure that piece of code does what it's supposed to do. And if it stops doing what it's supposed to do or throws an error or something isn't as it's expected, it should tell our developers there's a problem with this test and it's failing so they can see what their changes has broken somewhere else in Mortic. One of the main reasons why we experience bugs is because when we started monitoring this, we were only at around 20%, 28%, I think it was, of the code that powers Mortic actually having tests. So that's a huge percentage where we could have changed something and we wouldn't know that something had broken. When we released Mortic 3, we mandated that all pull requests that we merge, so bug fixes or features, must have automated tests that either improve or maintain the level of coverage. So a couple of bumps here I just want to clarify because people are going to ask this question. So this is this went down here because we actually started by just looking at the app folder and then we added plugins. So we added a whole load more code. So the percentage went down. And we have a blip that goes up here because with the Composer project, we were going to remove a bunch of directories. Then we realized that was a really bad experience for developers, so we put them back in again. So that's why it kind of went up and went down again. But you can see here the 3.1 release, yeah, a little bit of a change. 3.2, little bit of a change, not massive. When we start getting to 3.3 and then working towards 4, we can see substantial increases in test coverage. So I just want to say a really huge thank you to all of the developers who have politely replied with, of course, Ruth, when I've said, please, can you add tests? Or this these tests are failing, can you correct them? Or we can't merge this until we need until we have test coverage up. Because that is what's making Mortic more stable. That's what will bring us a more stable Mortic. If you're a developer and you like writing automated tests, I'm told people like that do exist. Please do think about helping us with that. Go on to GitHub, look at pull requests, and then filter the pull requests by those that are needing automated tests. You can use the label to find them. That would be a super, super valuable thing that you could do with your time, and it would help us get a lot of things merged that are currently blocked. So some important notes to just mention about the Mortic 4 release. Firstly, you must update to Mortic 3 before you can update to Mortic 4. So all of those instances who are two on, still on 2.16 or, or less, you will need to update to Mortic 3 before you can get the Mortic 4 update. So please think about doing that at your earliest convenience. Another important one is we're removing OAuth 1 in 4.0. So this is a particular type of technology that lets you connect to other tools using a APIs generally. This has been deprecated since 2012, so I'm so glad we're actually getting rid of it finally. We have got OAuth 2 support, so you'll need to just switch over to OAuth 2 support. Most integrations should support that now. We've also got client credentials if you need to still use that. That was brought in with Mortic 4. It's an alternative that you could use for OAuth 1. You will also need to make a one-line change in any themes that are not the themes that ship with Core. The reason for this is that we now allow email, um, we now allow themes to specify in the configuration file what builders they support. And notice I say builders with an S. So you're able to say this, this theme can be used in the legacy builder and in the great JS builder and in my bespoke builder. We need you to change that line, one line in your configuration file um, for any themes that are not core themes. And that's documented on the docs page for the new builder. PHP 8 support we were hoping to bring in, but we haven't actually been able to do that. We've done a lot of work to actually increase all of our dependencies to get ready for this. But there are still some dependencies that we need to make changes before we can actually support PHP 8. We're looking at probably 4.1 in September, possibly. If you'd like to help us with this, please do drop us a line in the um, Mortic 4 or in the product team Slack channel. And also I wanna just make it clear that Mortic 3.3.3, which is the current release of Mortic, 
We'll continue to get security updates for six months after Mautic 4 is released, but it will not get any more bug fixes unless there are security fixes or features. So you need to be updating to Mautic 4 if you want to get bug fixes and features. For developers, have a look on our GitHub repository. You'll find the upgrade for MD file in the root of our GitHub repository. That will tell you all of the backwards compatibility breaking changes that we're introducing with the 4.0 release that you need to take into account for your code, for your plugins, or whatever you're doing with Motic. And there's a short link there, mau.tc slash m4bc breaks with hyphens in the middle. So that's some notes about Motic 4. Let's just have an update on initiatives. So if you weren't in the keynote, uh, last November. An initiative is a time boxed, often a complex project. It's usually going to take about six to 12 months in duration. Sometimes they may be more, they may span over more than one year. Usually it involves multiple stakeholders across the project. And whilst they are generally about the product, they could also be an initiative which is about the community. So in November, I outlined six strategic initiatives where we were going to focus on these big projects that we felt we needed to do in the community. The first one was composer support. And that one has been completed, as I mentioned. That is the phase one of the composer project. There is more work that we want to do, that we need to do. So if you're interested in helping with that, do join the composer support initiative channel. Um, we do have a lot of expertise in there, but we're always interested to hear from people who have expertise in Composer. The email and landing page builder. Also, this is pretty much done. We, as I mentioned, we've still got a few things we need to work through before the 4.0 release. Again, I mentioned Web Mechanic and Idea2 are the two main contributors to this project. There is also going to be a phase two to this. It's never complete, is it? So there are also other things that we want to do that are not going to be done for the 4.0 release, but that we want to make sure that we do get to. Things like making sure that the JavaScript that powers the builder has got automated tests, and also maybe adding more configurable blocks within the builder. So if you'd like to get involved with that, do join the builders channel and find out more about how you can, how you can help with that initiative. The marketplace, as I mentioned, is in beta. We desperately need help on the marketplace project. John's done an amazing job in getting it to the point where it is now, but he's doing all that work in his spare time. So if you'd like to help, we could really do with some developers to help us with actually building out the infrastructure that we need to make this all work now that we've got the Composer initiative up and running. We also need input from user experience people to help tell us how we can do this in a way that is easy for marketers to use in the way that they expect to interact with this kind of um, to tooling and technology and from users of Mautic. So head over to the Mautic Marketplace Initiative chat if you'd like to get involved with this one. The resource management one, we haven't had an awful lot of interest in this initiative. However, the implementing a Mautic wide foldering system, we have got a new contributor who is interested in working on this. And this is an agency called Deeper. They've actually had a couple of calls with us and the product team, and they've supplied some wireframes for how they think this initiative might work, the implementing a foldering system. We're at the stage now where we need feedback from users of Mautic, from developers, from user experience folk. So please do look in the resource management initiative channel, have a look at the video recording of the previous call so you can get a sense of how this would work and do give us your feedback. I'm hoping that we'll be able to get this into one of the feature releases in the four series. So maybe September or maybe the end of the year, depending on how quickly we can move with providing feedback to the people who want to build this. And this one we've not actually had anyone interested in working on, which is a bit of a shame because installing and upgrading is probably the number one challenge that people face with Mautic in the community, particularly in the forums. What we want to do here is add some pre-flight checks to the Mautic install process and upgrade process. We already do this in the Mautic 3 migration script, which stops you from proceeding if there's problems that are likely to cause your upgrade or install to fail. We don't have those checks currently in the process for installing and upgrading. So we'd like to actually introduce them. 
We also need to do some improvements with the user interface, like in the install process, but also once you've installed, helping people understand how to get started with Mortic. And we need to improve the documentation. How do I install Mortic on Ubuntu? How do I install Mortic with Docker? How do I install Mortic with Kubernetes? How can I manage Mortic with Ansible? All those things would be great to have articles in our knowledge base. So that also falls into this initiative, and we would really love to have some help. There's a bountied issue there. If you want to help us with implementing those checks into the install and upgrade process, it's all really clearly detailed in that GitHub issue. So if you want to work on that, let us know. And we can give you some guidance and get you started. And then finally, next generation initiative. So this is one that you've probably heard a little bit about. Once we release Mortic 4, that's when we said we're going to start seriously thinking about how we're going to deliver the next generation of Mortic. We know that we need to make some significant changes in the architecture of Mortic. The way it was built was not built to scale to very high uh, levels of use, and we're seeing very high levels of use in organizations around the world. So we need to make some fundamental changes to how Mortic works, and that's what we're planning to do with the Next Gen initiative. So my vision for Mortic of the future is that it will be the ultimate fully featured and scalable marketing automation layer, which can stand alone or can be dropped into any existing marketing stack that you have. So that would enable organizations to seamlessly deliver an integrated experience, which delights the marketers who are using the software as much as it delights the customers who are receiving the um, output from the software. It's gonna take us a while to get there, there are some key issues we need to work on with this. Last November, I shared a rough timeline of what we were thinking in terms of future releases. I want to add a caveat here. This is not a mark this date in the diary. Ruth said that this release was coming on that date. It's not one of those. This is a rough idea of how we think things are going to go so that you can have a sense for when we think we'll be making progress. So this is where we're at the moment. We've done the Mortic 3 releases, we've built Mortic 4. And the reason why we've been doing that is because Symphony 3, that Mortic 3 is based on, comes to the end of its life at the end of 2021 in November. So we need to have Mortic 4 out by then because the version of the framework that we're based on is no longer supported. But that version that we're upgrading to is also going to come to the end of its life. So Symphony 4 will become end of life at the end of 2023. That may seem like a really long way away from you. But if you think about all of the work that went on in the three and the four releases, it's actually not an awful lot of time for us to make sure that we are now on Symphony 5 by that point. So whilst we're doing our Mortic 4 releases, we're going to have to work on a Mortic 5 release. We're just not going to be able to get a next generation initiative up and running and out of the door in time to meet the end of life of Symphony 4. It's just not feasible with the resources that we have currently. So what I envisage we end up doing is actually having Mortic 5 release and then maybe even 6 plus after that. For me, it's important that the people who are using Mortic have stability, that you know that there is a version of Mortic that's coming that's going to support you going forwards. But alongside that, we also need to do this big project to actually address the fundamental cracks in our houses, in the foundations, and not just keep papering over them. So that's going to start in earnest at the end of this year, beginning of next year. We're going to start doing proof of concepts. We're going to start looking at how can we do this and is it going to give us what we need going forwards. You can get involved with this. We're going to be working on project briefs, outlining specific tasks. It may well be that companies take on specific chunks of this, so they work on a particular part of the Next Gen initiative. It may be individual contributors work on very specific tasks. We're exploring all kinds of way, ways to make this happen. And then what we're aiming for is towards the end of 2024, beginning of 2025, that we'll have a next generation version of Mortic. It may not have feature parity with what 
we have in release at Mautic at that time. It may be that we decide to have an MVP, so a minimum viable product, with a specific set of bundles that are considered to be the absolute necessary ones, and that we then iterate on that and work on releasing other ones going forwards. But that's a very, very rough and a very non-committal timeline from me to you to give you a sense of what we're looking at. By that time, I want us to have grown the community as well in the same kind of way that we're growing the community now so that we will have more contributors, more organizations and more resources to do this work. So do hop into the Next Generation channel if you want to know more about this. You can watch back the calls that we've had about this and the decisions that we've made in the channel and on Confluence. All of that information is available to you. And we'd love to have your involvement. So now the last part of this presentation is what we learned and what are we going to change in the coming years? So we've definitely learned something from having a monthly release process. It's worked really well. Having that release every month has meant we've had to keep on top of our features and bug fixes. It's meant that we've had to keep the momentum going. It means that we're getting code out to you consistently. Needing people to add tests has slowed us down. It's meant there's features that we have not been able to merge or bug fixes we've not been able to push. However, it is helping us build a more stable Mautic. I'm willing to take that trade off if we get more stability as a result. We really do need more developers and more users of Mautic to help us test. It's a very, very small but awesome and amazingly dedicated team who are doing a lot of this work. It would help us immensely if people would consider giving a couple of hours a week where your team can contribute to Mautic. We would be able to go so much faster if we had those resources. So please have those conversations with your boss, or if you are the boss, make that decision. It would really help us. We also need to plan who's managing these releases, both product and marketing for the minor releases. It means people know who to go to if you've got questions. Developers know who the release lead is for the release that their feature is going in, so they can work with them to make sure that that pull request is ready to go. And also, this one has been a bit of a difficult one. So a milestone is something that we're using GitHub to say, these are the things that we're thinking we're going to include in this release. So we'll have one for each of the releases. And we've not been very disciplined. We just chuck loads of stuff in there. We don't really think about whether it's going to be ready for that release or not. And that's frustrating for a developer because initially they're told it's going to be in 3.1, then it gets bumped to 3.1.1, then it gets bumped again and bumped again. And it's very frustrating. It's also frustrating and demotivating for our release leads when they just have this epic pile to work through and they're never going to actually get to the end. So some of the changes that we're making, and you can have a read of the blog post, which should be up on mautic.org now. If you go to mau.tc slash release dash process, you'll find the blog post there. We're going to start having a quarterly release meeting, release planning meeting on the first Tuesday of every quarter, open to all. The product team are also going to choose themes for the bug fixes and for the feature releases. You can read more about that in the article. We're going to have 25 features or bug fixes per release that we choose to go in each release. They need to be ready to be tested and mergeable before we consider them for the release. We're also going to choose five issues that need to be fixed or addressed that we need to find a developer for. So as a marketer, this means that after that meeting, when we've made those milestones, you can actually look and see what should be coming in the next three releases. So you've got a sense of when something is likely to be there. And as a release team, it means we've got a, a target to aim for. We have those pull requests, which could be merged. We just need to find people to test. If there are other features or other bug fixes that are not in those 30, it doesn't mean we're not going to consider them for merging. It just means that the core team are focused on those 30. And until those 30 emerged, they're not going to be focusing on any other pull requests. So they're not going to be trying to chase you up to get the tests written or anything like that because it's not in their, in their sites for that release. 
So these are the dates for the diary where we're going to have those release meetings. So developers, this is when you need to get your pull requests ready to be merged. And after these dates is when you will know what's going to be coming in the next three months in those releases when we publish. They're all going to be at 2 o'clock UTC. It's on the Mortic community calendar. If you're not on that yet, hop into the product team Slack channel and all the information will be there. We're also looking at funding contributions. So Bounty Source hasn't been used that widely, and we've now introduced it on all the repositories. So if there's a bug that you've got, you can now say, I'm going to put $20 on that. If someone can fix it, I'll pay them $20. If you have multiple people, the developer will get all the money that's associated with that bug if they fix it. And also, it's really great to see that several organizations are also funding their staff to work full-time or part-time or give some of their time towards the project. So these organizations are already doing that or are just about to start that. If you want to do this as well, awesome. Just let us know and we can put those resources to use. Doesn't have to be coders, could be marketers, could be documentation writers. And finally, we're also looking at investigating opportunities to sponsor individual contributors who we know do really great, valuable things for the community, but they haven't got the capacity to do that as much as we would like because they need to actually earn money. So we're looking at ways that we can fund those individuals through our open collective so it will be transparent. And then this one, this one's quite exciting. So I want to know, how are you using Mortic? Well, we want to know the community. What do we need to do better? What makes Mortic great? And all kinds of other questions. So today we're going to launch the first annual Mortic user survey. It's online on the mortic.org blog. Now you can get the link and go to the survey. You can also use that link to go there as well. It takes about 10 minutes, so it's not massive contribution of time. But the information will really help us to understand more about the community than we can just get from the basic download rates and, and the information we get from the update server. Please do take a look at this. We will also be sending you an email to let you know, but probably once you've got over information overload from this event, we'll probably do that next week, I would think. And on that note, we are actually now using a Mortic instance. Thank you, Acquia, for giving us a campaign studio instance that we can use in the community. So we now have mailing lists. So if you haven't already joined and signed up, please go to mau.tc slash mailing lists, or you'll find it under the community tab on the website. Join the mailing list and we will keep you up to date by telling you information that you want to know about Mortic. So that's all I've got time for today. What questions are there that I can answer? Please pop the questions in the chat. I think David is going to come on and grill me. <laughs> Grill you? I don't know. Uh oh, I think you're suspecting something more than it's going to be. Actually, there's been a couple of questions that have been asked. So let me just get into it. Uh, Julio hey. asked, uh, "Is is it possible? You know, it's actually it's interesting because uh, Joey and I started that uh, the online only uh, Amotic help desk. You know, where it's not being done in person. And that wasn't set in the rules for how to run a meetup. So Julio mm. is asking in a similar fashion: Is it possible to open up meetups in different cities? Uh, from the ones uh, where the ones who are in charge are from different places. Not necessarily right now for him, but mm -hmm. is that uh, is that okay to open up different meetups in different cities if you're not positioned in that spot? I think the main thing is what's in the best interest of the community. So if there is the situation where you spend part of your time in this part of the country and part of your time in that part of the country, and you can make sure that you can consistently run meetups in those places every month, fine. Um, but from my perspective, what's most important is that there are regular meetings and there's someone who is regularly organizing them and present. And in the normal world, we will hopefully go back to in-person meetups. So I'm kind of, I'm not all that in favor of having someone running a group when they're not located in that area, because you also don't know the local, local information. Um, but I could be convinced. And ultimately, it's not my decision. That would come to the community team. So the community team would have to review that and decide what they think. But in my experience in Joomla, it's worked best if there's boots on the ground. Sure. That makes perfect sense there. I understand that. Uh, Wagner had a question. 
uh, though it may be too early, but uh, I think a lot of us here are curious. What is, uh, are the initial or tentative plans for next generation? Is it going to be built on a completely different architecture? Is That's a really good question. So I would say you can have a look at what we've been talking about and the um, the sit discussions we've been having already because they're historically there in Confluence. So you can read and watch the talks we've had. And Alan also did a talk last year where he talked about some of the thoughts we were having. Some of this is actually already being worked through by some architects at Acquia because they're facing the same problem that Mortic is facing because they're based on the same framework and you know the same software. Um, so the outcome of what they find about how to optimize will trickle down into what might be helpful for us. But predominantly, we're looking at having a front end that is a decoupled application. So probably in Angular, we'll be having some kind of layer in the middle of that that does magic with APIs that communicates with everything um, and potentially have the opportunity to have different data layers underneath. So you can use what ships with Mortic on MySQL. But if you want to, you could use a different database platform. You could have a CDP that manages your contact profiles and segmentation and then pushes everything up into Mortic and does the magic in Mortic to do the marketing automation. So there's lots of different options that we're considering. Um, but I would say, yeah, watch back the talk from last year, Alan's talk from last year, and have a look back at the notes in the Composer Initiative. All right, great, great. Uh, you know, actually, even going back to last year, uh, there were some great conversations about diversity. Um, yeah. Uh, how, how is it uh, over the last year? How is it improved? How is diversity improved within the community? I think actually one of the side effects of having the pandemic is that there's a lot more people able to get involved in a lot more things because they're online rather than in person. I love in-person events, but they can also be really difficult. Um, they can be difficult if you can't travel for whatever reason. They can be difficult if you have a disability. So I have a disability and traveling for me at certain times in my life has been really challenging. Um, so I feel like that has opened things up a bit more. I think we're also, I speak for myself, but hopefully also all of us, much more aware and had our eyes opened over the last year, two years, as to implicit bias and racism particularly. So that's something that has definitely come much more into my awareness over the last 12, 18 months. And I'm much more thinking from the project perspective of if we're making these decisions, how is that impacting the people who we're trying to engage with? And also trying to think about ways that maybe we are not open and inclusive, ways that we are not welcoming of people and trying to address that. So, yeah. Good. No, it's an ever going thing. It's yeah, it sure does. You know, it's an ever going, you know, ongoing thing. Um, you know, just yeah. paying attention to it. Just awareness to a large extent makes a big, big difference. And I think Yeah, and I think if you've like if you've ever been excluded from anything in your life, um, if you have the opportunity to build a community where there is or you're trying as hard as you can to not have exclusion, then you'll take it because that's like building your own safe space. And for me, that's why I'm so passionate about it is because I felt that, you know, I've been on the receiving end nowhere near as much as some people. Um, but that really drives me to make sure that we are as aware as possible um, and try and make as much um, trying to be as inclusive as we can as a community and as welcoming as we can as a community. Great. Uh, today is uh, June seventeenth, twenty twenty one. We're right in the middle of June, yeah. and we're in, we're in the home stretch for Mautic Four. Here. <laughs> uh, do you have any kind of uh, um, specific time frames that you're really trying to track to? I know that uh, end of June, early July. Is there a sense for where uh, you would ideally like to track to, and maybe the you know reality for what may may may, may come past? It is, it's challenging, and this is one of the ever-present challenges of open source, is that we are reliant on people's time, and time is precious. And a lot of the things that we've been working on, those initiatives I was talking about, are often coming down to one person, yeah? So my kind of line in the sand is 28th of June, Monday, 28th of June. That's when I would really like to be able to make the Mortic 4 release. Um, 
But I'm also really aware that that puts a lot of pressure on those people to get all this stuff done. So we do, we really, if we're going to hit that, we have got work we need to do in order to do that. Um, and hopefully now that this conference is over, that frees up my time, but it also frees up the time of a few other people. We'll be able to really focus our attention and get through those things that need to be done before we can make that release. We've also got a whole bunch of stuff to do with marketing as well. So we've got some amazing visuals that have been designed by a new contributor, which are top secret, but they're very cool. And I'm very excited that that contributor has decided to join. Um, but the whole you know, process of communicating out to the world about what's going to be in the release is managed by the marketing team. That has to happen simultaneously with the product and the education team. So, yeah. I'm excited when every contributor decides to join. Uh, yeah, see these little little additions, even little contributions or big contributions. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, yeah. Last question as we wrap up here. I'm curious on what your hopes are for a commercial ecosystem surrounding market. Yeah, I mean, I think I feel like having a commercial ecosystem around Mortic is really important. In the community council panel earlier, we were talking about. Um, the Gartner and Forrester and things like that, and the Acquia is in there. And you might think, well, so what? I mean, we're an open source project and Acquia is a company, but the fact that a company based on Mortic is at the top of their game and being recognized for that gives a lot of credibility. So the more organizations that we have that are doing great things with Mortic, the more we actually get people looking into Mortic and using it themselves. But also because those organizations are building businesses around Mortic, it's in their best interest for the Mortic product and the community to grow and thrive. So they are also getting on board with being like, I want to contribute. How do I contribute? And for some of them, it's financial because they haven't got the time to be able to actually contribute. And they may just put like a 1% charge on every invoice and that 1% comes to the community. Or it may be that they just say, we'll contribute $100 a month. It's all welcome. But also you start to see organizations saying, this feature is really missing and my customers are bugging me for it. I'm just going to write it and then we'll contribute it back to the community. And that's where we start to see a real, a real innovation coming is when companies come to us a bit like Deeper that I was talking about saying, there's this problem, we need to solve it for our customers. This is how we're thinking of solving it. If we do it this way, would that work for the community? Those conversations are the conversations I love to have because they're thinking about the community, not assuming that what they want to do is what the community wants, but opening a dialogue about this is how we think we'll do it. Will that be good for the community? So those kind of conversations, I think, as we develop an ecosystem, but also integrations, you know, integrate all the things. That is an important part of our ecosystem as well having people develop plugins and being able to make a living from supporting mortic and supporting plugins wonderful this has been amazing thank you so much for that presentation and for answering all of our questions there i I, I want to say on on behalf of a number of people a large number of people uh, and our customers thank you thank you thank you for everything <laughs> that you do in a big big way and i say that sincerely We'll